coaxial cable attenuation versus temperature and talk about the, the myth that many people have long believed to be the reason attenuation in coax changes over temperature and then look at the real reason why it changes over temperature. And I'm gonna also hide this little box right down here and start first about some of the properties that affect coaxial cable attenuation. And I think if we if we think about a, a length of coaxial cable, you know, a couple hundred feet or a hundred feet or a thousand feet, whatever it is, um, we all are very familiar with the characteristics of that cable. We know that it has certain properties that we're familiar with and are very well understood. Um, we know, for example, that when we transmit RF signals through a length of coaxial cable, the RF signals um, become weaker and weaker as they travel through the cable, which means we've got to boost them up with an amplifier some someplace if we want to continue to transmit them even longer distances. Now, an interesting thing about coaxial cable attenuation is that um, if we compare the attenuation through a length of coax compared to attenuation through, say, a splitter or directional coupler or something. Um, we have flat loss in passive devices, but in coaxial cable, it's actually a tilted loss. The loss is greater at higher frequencies and, and less at lower frequencies. So that's all pretty well um, understood. And another one that I think is pretty well understood is what happens over temperature. As the temperature goes up, the, uh, the, the attenuation changes. As the temperature goes down, the attenuation changes. And the variation is about 1% per 10 degree Fahrenheit temperature change. The question though is, have you ever wondered why the temperature changes? So we're gonna talk about that. I think that first bullet point is the core behind the myth. And most legends do have some kernel of truth in them. Um, and so there is factually a, an impact of temperature to attenuation, right? So uh, I think that's the core. Well, that's true. And I think we all know, and we talk about here on, the, on this particular slide, um, cable expands when it gets hot and it contracts when it gets cold. And those of us who work in climates where the temperature can get very cold in the wintertime are very familiar with hardline coax pulling out of a connector. And in really, really severe cases where it gets really, really cold, we've seen situations where the connector can pull out of the housing of an amplifier or a tap or something else. And that's that's pretty bad. So um, that's going one direction. The cable length physically changes as it gets cold versus it gets uh, versus getting hot. So uh, you know, if the cable expands when it when it or gets longer when the weather's warm, that might explain why the attenuation increases. Um, you know, more loss because you've got more cable, right? The cable got longer as the temperature got warmer, so there's more cable there, so the attenuation increase. And of course, you'd think going the other direction, the cable shrinks when it's really cold, gets shorter. Well, there's less cable, so gee, there must be less attenuation. And that's that seems like a reasonable explanation of what's going on. Yeah, that is maybe. the myth. Yeah, that is the myth. Well, no, nope, it's not even close. The The length of the cable does change a little bit, but you might be surprised just how little it changes. So let's go through an example here that will help to clarify this. So let's think about a span of cable, and we'll just pretend that it's 750 cable between two utility poles that are a couple hundred feet apart. And we'll assume also that good construction practices were used, so at, at the mid-span, We've got in this level span of cable two feet of sag, and that's that's ideally what we want. So we'll say that that two feet of sag is there when the temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's that's fairly practical, I think. The actual length of the cable because of that sag will be somewhat longer than the physical span length of 200 feet between the two poles, um, but it's not as much as you think. It's only 200.0533 feet. And you say, all right, Ron, where did you get that number? Now, down at the bottom of the slide, I've got a note there that references an old Times Fiber Communications technical note uh, that, that, that discussed that whole phenomena, and it even included some equations in it to, uh, to uh, allow the calculation of the length changes and whatnot over temperature. So that's where the numbers in these slides came from, is, is that old tech note from way, 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 way back. So there it is. At at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the length of that cable in a 200 foot span with two feet of sag is just a smidgen over 200 feet. So far, so good. Now, if, if we look at the spec sheet for 750 P3 type cable, uh, we'll see that, that it's attenuation at 750 megahertz is about a dB and a half 
per 100 feet. So 1.48 dB per 100 feet. And, and that's at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we go back to our hypothetical span of, of uh, cable between the two poles that are separated by a couple hundred feet, the cable length will be slightly longer at 68 degrees than it was at, uh, at 60 degrees, but it's not that much. It's you know, 200, about 200.06 feet versus 200.05 feet. So a hundredth of a foot difference. And um, you know, that's over that, that eight degree temperature swing. The insertion loss in that rut, just, just over 200 feet of cable is just under three dB. So it's 2.96 dB of loss between those two poles. So, so far so good. And now, as you mentioned, um, yeah. sorry to interject there, um, okay. you know, attenuation is a function of frequency. So it's important to note that we're just looking at a single frequency at 750 yes. megahertz yeah. for attenuation. I figured out, I'd do that just to keep it, the, keep it easier. So we're just looking at the highest frequency in this hypothetical cable system. They obviously are in, in dire need of an upgrade to get past 750 megahertz, but there's still some 750 megahertz planned out there. So let's pretend that our hypothetical cable system is in a, it is in a very mild climate where the coldest temperature they'll ever see is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest in the summertime, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's a, that's a 60 degree swing um, between winter and summer. So not a, not a big deal. Now, if we follow the general guidance that we're all familiar with, that attenuation changes 1% in, de in decibels per 10 degree Fahrenheit temperature change. That means our 200 foot ish span of cable uh, is going to vary 6% in terms of attenuation. So that's 0.18 dB over that 60 degree temperature range. And it, uh, what that also means is at 50 degrees, the attenuation is going to be 2.91 dB between these two poles. And at 110 degrees, it's going to be 3.08 dB. So it varies a little bit. I mean, it's not a whole lot, but it varies a little bit. Now the question becomes, what lengths of 750 cable are required to have those two values of attenuation, 2.91 dB and 3.08 dB. So the answer is, if we go back to our published spec of 1.48 dB per 100 feet, and again, we're at one frequency, just 750 megahertz, then 2.91 dB of loss at that frequency corresponds to just a smidgen under 197 feet of cable. It's actually 196.62, but let's call it 197 feet of cable. And at the higher end, the 3.08 dB of loss um, is equivalent to just over 208 feet of cable. Now, think about that for a minute. If we well, use that. Hold on yeah. a minute. So what you're telling me is that in order for the cable length to equal those two attenuation values the cable would have to grow or contract by 11 feet yes in that 200 foot span just between those two poles it would have to change its length by 11 feet 